Let's now tell you how the U.S. Army is taking a major step with a program to install small portable nuclear reactors on military bases across the country. The initiative aims to supply selected bases with micro reactors by the year 2028. Each reactor will generate less than 20 megawatts of electricity, enough to power a small town, allowing bases to maintain operations even when the local power grids fail. And officials are saying the reactors will help keep critical systems running during bad weather, cyber attacks or other disruptions. The principal deputy assistant secretary of the army has said, what resilience means to us is that we have power no matter what 24 by 7, quote unquote. The reactors will be owned and operated by commercial companies with the Army and Energy Department providing technical guidance and uranium fuel. Nine bases are being considered for the first phase of this program with two micro reactors planned for each base. Vendors for the reactors will be selected next year. The program has drawn strong interest from new nuclear startups, many of which are developing micro reactors, new fuel technologies and uranium enrichment capabilities. He builds on more than six years of work by the Army and the Defense Innovation Unit, a Pentagon office that partners with startups to bring new technology to military operations. Officials say microreactors could be particularly useful in remote locations or overseas deployments where transporting conventional fuel and maintaining reliable power can be difficult. So now power reliability has become increasingly important as bases in Texas and California have experienced outages due to snowstorms and many installations rely on aging public utility grids or fossil fuel backups. Renewable sources like wind and solar are seen as intermittent solutions that cannot always meet the Army's needs. The push for micro reactors also aligning with America's national security priorities. The Army is preparing for potential operations in the Pacific or Arctic regions where logistical challenges could affect the, inner, the energy supply. And U.S. President Donald Trump signed an executive order earlier this year, remember, directing the federal government to deploy modern nuclear reactors for national security purposes and requested that the army start using reactors on bases by September 2028. While the U.S. Army has not provided a clear cost estimate for the program, some funding will come from the Defense Innovation Unit budget. The Air Force is also exploring micro-reactor technology, with eight nuclear power companies reportedly competing to supply bases. The program represents a big step in modernizing the American Army's energy infrastructure to provide a more resilient and mobile power to critical military operations in the U.S. and abroad. A grim remnant of the Bashar al-Assad regime in Syria has surfaced, exposing the atrocities committed by his government on the masses. An estimated 160,000 people were detained or went missing in Syria since 2011 when mass anti-government protests were met by a brutal crackdown and spiraled into civil war. Many of them are likely buried in unmarked mass graves, reportedly. And now a Reuters investigation has found that the Assad government carried out a two-year clandestine operation to truck thousands of bodies from one of Syria's largest known mass graves to a secret location more than an hour away in the remote desert. The operation to transfer the bodies from Kutaifa which is at the site of the mass graves, to another hidden site, dozens of kilometers away, was called Operation Move Earth. It lasted from 2019 until 2021. Witnesses claimed reportedly the purpose of the operation was to cover up the Assad government's crimes and help restore its image. Reuters saying it informed Ahmad al shara government of the findings and the government is yet to respond. Reuters has deliberately not revealed the location of the site in order to prevent it from intruders coming in and possible tampering, reportedly. To uncover the location of uh, the grave site and detail the vast operation, Reuters spoke to 13 people with direct knowledge of the two-year effort to move the bodies. 
The agency reviewed documents produced by officials involved and analyzed hundreds of satellite images of both grave sites taken over the course of several years. With at least 34 trenches measuring two kilometers long, the grave in the Dhomey Desert is among the most extensive created during the civil uh, during the civil war there for four nights nearly every week from February 2019 to April 2021 six to eight trucks filled with dirt and human remains traveled from Kotefa to the Dhomer desert site according to the witnesses involved in that operation and Reuters report claiming that everyone directly involved vividly recalled the stench including two truckers, three mechanics, a bulldozer operator, and a former officer from Asa's elite Republican Guard. The idea to move thousands of bodies came into being in late 2018 when Assad was nearing victory in the civil war. Officials saying the dictator was hoping to regain international recognition by, uh, after being sidelined by years of sanctions and allegations of brutality. And after his fall late last year, Assad and many of his aides fled the country. By the time Assad fell, all 16 trenches documented at Kotefa by Reuters had been emptied. In fact, uh, organized excavation and DNA analysis could help trace what happened to those who went missing, easing one of Syria's most painful fault lines. Syria's new National Commission for Missing People has announced plans to create a DNA bank and a centralized digital platform for families of the missing. OpenAI is loosening its rules. ChatGPT will soon allow adult content for verified users. The goal is to make the chatbot more flexible, more personal and more human. But the decision is triggering fresh questions about safety, censorship and also morality. Take a look. ChatGPT, the world's most popular AI chatbot, is about to get a new identity. Starting in December 2025, adults will be able to request erotica and other previously restricted material. The owner of the tech giant, Sam Altman, describes the change as part of a treat adults like adults policy. One designed to make ChatGPT more open and versatile, but the path is dangerous. How to enforce age verification reliably? What stops minors or bad actors from sneaking in? Critics warn of fake IDs, shared accounts, slippery slips. This recent offering from ChatGPT aims to boost engagement and subscriber growth amid increasing competition from platforms like Elon Musk's Grok, which already offers explicit AI companionship. However, the policy raises complex challenges. The US, ChatGPT's largest market, will likely see smoother implementation. But India, the second biggest market, where pornography is largely banned, faces legal and regulatory barriers that could restrict features. OpenAI's move comes amid growing calls for stronger AI regulations on content moderation and child protection. While ChatGPT's relaxing restrictions align with broader consumer demand for less censored AI, the company will have to balance adult freedom with safeguarding vulnerable users. Bureau Report, We on World is One.